Persoalan utama dalam akidah adalah kepercayaan kepada kewujudan Tuhan yang difokuskan sama ada kepada persoalan percaya atau tidak percaya akan kewujudan Tuhan. Terdapat sejumlah besar manusia dengan penuh keyakinan mengaku mempercayai kewujudan Tuhan dan terdapat juga sebahagian manusia yang mengaku tidak percaya kepada kewujudan Tuhan. Hal ini mewujudkan dua istilah kumpulan manusia iaitu kumpulan teist dan juga kumpulan etist. Teist ialah orang yang percaya kepada kewujudan Tuhan. Etist adalah orang yang tidak percaya kepada kewujudan Tuhan. Walau bagaimanapun, apabila dianalisis kepercayaan etis ini akan didapati mereka juga percaya kepada kewujudan sesuatu yang kuasanya sama dengan istilah Tuhan yang dipegang oleh golongan etis. Golongan etis kecewa dengan kehidupan beragama dan ingin membuang agama jauh daripada kehidupan mereka. Pada asasnya mereka akan kembali kepada keadaan asal sebelum beragama di mana akhirnya mereka terpaksa mencari sesuatu untuk dipercayai. Sekurang-kurangnya mereka akan mengatakan Mother Nature dan sebagainya. Is it rational to believe in God? Many people think that faith and reason are opposites, that belief in God and tough-minded logical reasoning are like oil and water. They are wrong. Belief in God is far more rational than atheism. Logic can show that there is a God. If you look at the universe with common sense and an open mind, you'll find that it's full of God's fingerprints. A good place to start is with an argument by Thomas Aquinas, the great 13th century philosopher and theologian. The argument starts with the not very startling observation that things move, but nothing moves for no reason. Something must cause that movement, and whatever caused that must be caused by something else, and so on. But this causal chain cannot go backwards forever. It must have a beginning. There must be an unmoved mover to begin all the motion in the universe, a first domino to start the whole chain moving, since mere matter never moves itself. A modern objection to this argument is that some movements in quantum mechanics radioactive decay for example have no discernible cause but hang on a second just because scientists don't see a cause doesn't mean there isn't one it just means science hasn't found it yet maybe someday they will but then there will have to be a new cause to explain that one and so on and so on but science will never find the first cause that's no knock on science it simply means that a first cause lies outside the realm of science Another way to explain this argument is that everything that begins must have a cause. Nothing can come from nothing. So if there's no first cause, there can't be second causes, or anything at all. In other words, if there's no creator, there can't be a universe. But what if the universe were infinitely old, you might ask? Well, all scientists today agree that the universe is not infinitely old, that it had a beginning in the Big Bang. If the universe had a beginning, then it didn't have to exist. And things which don't have to exist must have a cause. There's confirmation of this argument from Big Bang cosmology. We now know that all matter, that is the whole universe, came into existence some 13.7 billion years ago, and it's been expanding and cooling ever since. No scientist doubts that anymore, even though before it was scientifically proved, Atheists called it creationism in disguise. Now, add to this premise a very logical second premise, the principle of causality, that nothing begins without an adequate cause. And you get the conclusion that since there was a Big Bang, there must be a Big Banger. But is this Big Banger God? Why couldn't it be just another universe? Because Einstein's general theory of relativity says that all time is relative to matter. And since all matter began 13.7 billion years ago, so did all time. 
So there's no time before the Big Bang. And even if there is time before the Big Bang, even if there is a multiverse, that is, many universes with many Big Bangs, as string theory says is mathematically possible, that too must have a beginning. An absolute beginning is what most people mean by God. Yet some atheists find the existence of an infinite number of other universes more rational than the existence of a creator. Never mind that there is no empirical evidence at all that any of these unknown universes exists, let alone a thousand or a gazillion. The conclusion that God exists doesn't require faith. Atheism requires faith. It takes faith to believe in everything coming from nothing. It takes only reason to believe in everything coming from God. I'm Peter Kraft, Professor of Philosophy at Boston College for Prager University. Secara kesimpulannya, semua manusia sebenarnya mempunyai kepercayaan tentang kewujudan Tuhan. Walau bagaimanapun, kepercayaan mereka adalah pelbagai dan berbeza-beza. Perbezaan paling asas dalam kepercayaan kepada kewujudan Tuhan merujuk kepada persoalan, adakah Tuhan itu satu atau banyak? Satu dalam banyak atau banyak dalam satu? Ada manusia yang tidak menyebut sebagai Tuhan, tetapi mereka tetap menyatakan adanya supernatural power atau powers atau kuasa atau kuasa-kuasa yang maha hebat. Persoalan ini dirujuk sebagai persoalan monotism atau monotisma dan politism atau politisma. Apakah persoalan utama dalam akidah ketuhanan? Adakah kepercayaan kepada kewujudan Tuhan atau keyakinan kepada suruhan Tuhan? Ya, jawapannya adalah kepercayaan kepada kewujudan Tuhan Tis ialah adakah orang yang percaya kepada kewujudan Tuhan Ataupun orang yang tidak percaya kepada kewujudan Tuhan Ya, jawapannya orang yang percaya akan kewujudan Tuhan Perbezaan paling asas dalam kepercayaan kepada kewujudan Tuhan merujuk kepada persoalan Adakah Tuhan itu satu atau banyak? Atau adakah Tuhan itu milik semua atau khusus kepada kumpulan manusia tertentu sahaja? Ya, jawapannya adakah Tuhan itu satu atau banyak? Sampai berjumpa lagi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera